Right now, we have then 40 million people in our labor force who can easily be upskilled, reskilled, retooled. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to be a good plumber or to be a carpenter or to be an electromechanical worker. And precisely, we have the raw material. We're the, one of the few countries with still what we can call human resources that are increasing. Now, let me emphasize, let's make sure that the Department of Education is doing its best to address that problem among our young people. So that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, we have a lot of people who can work for artificial intelligence, robotics, data analytics, and so on and so forth that require really high proficiency in reading, math, etc. But in the meantime, we are very lucky that we have already this base of trainable people. And that is why we have to restructure as President Marcos Jr. announced in his last State of Nation address, we have to tweak our K-10 and K-12 so that more and more of our junior and high school students will become technical workers rather than possessors of academic degrees that lead to nowhere. It's been already at least 10 years when we've noticed that a lot of college graduates are either unemployed or underemployed. That's a very high rate of underemployment. A lot of people with college degrees are occupying jobs that are way below what they were supposed to be educated for. And that is a social problem. So which means that really for some time, we should have been giving emphasis to textbook rather than to college degrees. And now more than ever, because you ask the construction sector, with the build, 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 and real estate boom, there is a huge shortage of carpenters, plumbers, mechanics, bricklayers, and they cannot seem to fill that void. Still a culture problem that we followed the wrong model, which is the American model. American model also has this problem. Everyone wants to have a college degree and they have a shortage of technical skills. We should have followed long ago the European model in which for a long time, very few people went to universities. They went to technical institutes and that's how they industrialized Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And that's exactly where the so-called dual system has been uh, transferred to the Philippines. It's a very simple thing. Uh, they have a curriculum. These young people would be in a classroom part of the time, but most of the time they already are fielded to cooperating companies who uh, give them on the job experience. And this can last for anywhere from 12 to 18 months. And that was a very effective way of upskilling these people if you have money for education, keep putting it in the public school. We're very far from the ratio of expenditure to GDP that our neighbors are spending. Our typical neighbor, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, they spend 6% or more of the GDP on public education. We're spending less than 3%. So what our government has to do, if it has money for education, focus on public education. So what we have to do is make sure that within the Philippines, all the jobs that are not uh, being occupied because of short shortage of talents are being occupied precisely by reforming the educational system, moving more and more towards uh, technical education rather than academic education. I'm not saying that we should not invest also in university graduates because if we, we do get more and more into the so-called industrial revolution 4.0 we will need a lot of knowledge workers no? and that's why i am concerned about the uh, low scores being obtained by our 13 year olds and 14 year olds in those international tests but we have at least 10 years to prepare them fortunately now the leadership 
has taken the problem into their hands and they have a whole committee that is now focusing on industry linkages. It's industry, government, academic linkage, and together they're solving the problem of skills training. The sector that needs a lot of this is the BPO IT sector. That has 1.7 million people and 60% of them are threatened by artificial intelligence and robotics because they are in the customer services which are the easiest to robotize. So they have to make sure that they're very proactive in taking their existing workers and preparing them for knowledge intensive work. So for animation, uh, game development, medical transcription, so that they are not going to be voice oriented workers. 10 million of our workers are all over the world being accepted as some of the most skilled workers anywhere. I think a big challenge is for us to look at those 10 million overseas workers and see how we can attract them to come back earlier than sooner and see what are the skills that they were able to cultivate abroad that can now be deployed in the Philippines. That is also one of the efforts of the PCCI because that is already an existing workforce. They already have been exposed to uh, more advanced industrial environments. So I think they can be now very useful as we uh, transition from a low middle income economy to a high middle income economy in two to three years. So that means that our consumer demands will now be more and more similar to those in these countries where these overseas workers have been uh, working and they can be now useful in the Philippines and if they can get sufficiently competitive salaries, they'll be happy to be with their families rather than working.